I'm so glad to see you all here. Some of you are sending me incredible messages about your current experiences. Some are entering the full flood of the Shakti opening. God realization when it's completed. Some are happy beyond measure. I uh, it has nothing to do with me, it's you. You're doing it. I'm just a placeholder. Mark makes the music. I make the bullshit. But I model my bullshit after the stuff Robert taught us. But I take the bullshit out of his bullshit and give you the straight shit. Robert used to like to make up stories about realization and all those kinds of things. He never touched on energies at all and said that I was wise not to go into them. At least that's what he told the group when I wasn't there. I had my God realization about a dozen years ago. When I felt the full power of Shakti, still wrapped in mind though, because that realization had a lot of stories about what realization is And I told those stories back then. Spencer remembers. He's been here forever. Michael remembers. Maxie should remember. But all that's gone now. And what I feel now is much deeper than Shakti. It's just the most exquisite happiness being totally empty. And the thing is the empty void within and without. You're so exquisitely peaceful. that it borders on an extremely subtle bliss that's there all the time, not only in my body, but around me, in the room, and in the universe. You 
if you just be quiet. Turn your attention within. Drop all the stories you've ever known, which is almost impossible to do because that would require endless work. But what you can do is go inside yourself and inhabit your body. Let the intention drop out of your head into your body. Frank, get out of your head and into your body. Become a smiling Buddha. Chris and Bernadette are both almost simultaneously enjoying walking into the initial woods of God realization. Every day they have fireworks going on inside themselves and around them. They're like sparklers sending their joy everywhere. Same with Eric. He too is at the beginning of the extreme joy of walking in God. Feeling the arising of bliss and probably multiple energy sources throughout his body. And that's only beginning. It's just the beginning. When you get the last vestiges of that God realization draining out of your beingness, it takes the mind with it all together. And you're left in the great void of silence. Where you don't need to be entertained by mind anymore. Because you feel the majesty of silence and stillness. And the deep happiness dwelling in there, dwelling in you all around you, everywhere. Your joy silences the universe. What a joy to be nothing. To have no unmet desires, to feel no needs, to be absolutely content where you are in your own skin here and now.
all that other stuff in you dies because you're not giving it energy anymore. Most of us don't realize how we're diverting energy into our fantasy wants. Our whole universe is based on concepts given to us by others. We're born without a matrix. And then one is thrust upon us. Whether you're an American, an Italian, or Russian, or a Chinese person, each is thrust into a different kind of matrix. Some are more conducive to awakening than others. Some matrices are very deep and rigid. So there's almost no creativity in the souls and wrapped in those matrices. Others are more loose and allows others to break free more easily. Getting free of the matrix is more or less a lifetime experience. It takes a long time to see the imprisoning effects of the matrix on your being and your life. And the matrix are words and concepts and beliefs. I'm afraid that little guy here is going to end satsang too soon. But a little guy here, he's so lively, the life in him is so ecstatic, it trembles constantly, and I can feel the burning of his life force in him that keeps him constantly moving, except when he goes to sleep. And his sleep is so deep, an earthquake wouldn't bring it out of him out of it. He's a white God. The Supreme Cat. The Cuddle Meister. Even I used to complain about how empty our house felt after the death of Holly and Maxie and Freddie. But little guy here, Shakti, fills the house with electricity, joy, the life force. So get a cat. It's the quickest way to enlightenment. Just watch that cat, how he or she moves, stops moving. Feel the life force in them by holding them and touching them. And then they lick your hand while you're touching them. And you can feel the subtle trembling of the life force going on in him and it burns. It burns heavy when you're young. And it cool down, cools down the older you get until it enters a stage of silence when if you're very lucky, all the shit in you has been exhausted. And by that, I mean all of the inherited wants and desires, the desire for sex, the desire for mating, coupling, 
the desire for family, the desire for wealth. And here's a hard one to get beyond. The desire for knowledge, especially the spiritual knowledge. Oh, what we wouldn't give to get spiritual knowledge. And the strange thing is, in order to get spiritual knowledge, you have to give away all the rest of you. Expel it from your body. Feel the mind in you. See the mind in you. And push it away. And become that emptiness, that beingness underneath all the excitement and the energies. There's a deeper place, Mark, than the energies. It's utter silence. And sometimes it just feels silent and other times There's such joy in it, joy in the peace of being dead to the world, but totally alive to yourself, lost in your own beingness. You understand that, Frank? Reiki, can you grasp what I'm talking about? You don't have to answer. Shake your head one way or the other. Sideways like that. Maxi, you don't come anymore to satsang. I hear you go out walking around outside while satsang is going on pretending to be a tzatzong, but you're not. Why do you do it to us? Vesalina, where are you today? Why are you hiding? You never hide. Why are you, oh, you're sleeping, that's it. You don't want us to see how relaxed you are and you think that's a, a naughty thing to be. But you picked it up from Michael, and that's a good place to pick it up from. But Michael hides, too. Relax. Even if you're nude and sleeping in your bed, come on camera. Be yourself. Be not afraid. Expose everything. Expose your heart. Your neck. <laughs> The life force in you is the divine. The first tests, tastes of the life force by itself begins when you begin losing interest in the world. And the further away you are from interest in the world, it allows God to come into your life. Fills you with joy, ecstasy, energies, golden lights. All colored lights, different kinds of prana and energies. It's quite an exciting time for a while. You can also develop powers during this period of time. I remember Philip Kaplow said, He developed a power, which was to be able to watch a person and make them freeze in their tracks. He had no idea what good would come of that power, but he played around with it for a while before he found out it didn't mean much to him. 
I guess though you could fix a race by getting the lead racehorse to slow down and stop. What do you want that's left in your life? What's that un unfinished need in you? Is it for joy? Is it for happiness? Is it for God realization? Is it for self realization? Or do you think that's what you want when in fact, all day long you're busy with other needs? When those needs drain out of you, finally, awakening is so damn easy. Because it's just acknowledgement of how you perceive yourself in the world at that time. When the mind grows silent, as well as your needs and wants and desires along with it. And you want nothing. And when you want nothing, everything is given to you. Joy. Understanding. Bliss. There's not much you can do really to force it. Because the efforts you make to attain anything keep you in the matrix or at least an antechamber to the matrix. And I'm calling matrix the universal mind we're all immersed in from the moment of birth. because your parents are totally gripped by that matrix. And education are different levels of entrance into that matrix, which really is an entrance into a prison, a conceptual prison that separates you from your own joy your own roots of happiness. Veselina's resting her laptop on her stomach as I watch it go up and down as she breathes. It's quite hypnotic. Now her guru is entering the scene. Reiki, how are you? Are you happy yet? No answer, really. Okay, we'll let you sit with it for a dozen years or so until happiness envelops you, until you can't even stand the bliss of the happiness you got. You want to pop out of your body like a pimple exploding because the bliss is so great in you. We ought to have a session. Where people just talk about what they're going through. I'd love to hear what Cassie's going through. But I won't ask because she might tell me. And this is the wrong place for that. I could ask Bernadette. I could ask Mark. 
But Mark tells us all the time how he is, just by the quality of his voice and what he says. Edgy, it's time for satsang. Jay, are you feeling any bliss yet? No I need just, to talk. No need to talk. Go with the M's. You can feel your bliss. If you just shut your mind down, become dumb as a rock. And watch your cat. If you have a cat, you have a guru right in your own apartment or home. Otherwise, you have to come here on Wednesdays and Sundays. To listen to my bullshit. When you can watch the bullshit delivered by your cat at any time. You think I'm kidding about cats, don't you? But it's true. Cats are always true to themselves, wherever they are, whatever their needs are, whatever their lack of needs is. A cat has no pretense, no mask. When you become dumb as a rock, you're proud of your stupidity because it's filled with joy and depth. And you can feel your life force directly burning inside of you. And you feel that burning of life within you. And you wonder how you were able to hide it so early in life by covering it up with desires of being human in your mind. But when you get rid of your mind, get rid of your desires, get rid of your worries, get rid of your wants. This is why Robert told you all kinds of bullshit. The world is unfolding as it should. Don't interfere with it. He was telling you to shut up, pay attention only to yourself. Don't try to fix things outside of yourself. Just be quiet and feel yourself. But he had to tell you all kinds of stories to make you stop from thinking. And wondering and desiring and thinking about how bad things are or how good things are. He wanted you to stop thinking. He used to say the mind is a wonderful thing to waste. So forget your mind, push it outside of yourself. After a while of meditation, you can begin to see your mind clearly as an entity inside of you. And it's an entity like imagination. It's created by the mind. And the entity can penetrate your body, penetrate the walls, penetrate heaven. It can go anywhere. But if you push it out, 
push it away. You can rest in yourself <clears throat> until you hit the fundamental layer of the life force within you. The joy of that, the joy of just being the life force. You've even gone lower than God. God is that initial joy you get when first entering the heaven of realization. God realization can be the first door, the bright promise, the deliverance you've always been waiting for. But it goes deeper and deeper after that. And disappears into nothingness along with you. What you're left with is emptiness that fills you with happiness. But a happiness so deep, it can't be expressed in words. It's deeper than the mind. I can only talk about it in third person, as if it weren't, it was as if it was something I was describing without having words to convey what it's like. Even Shaktipat does not convey it. Shaktipat is the first awakening. When you first experience the totality of energies inside of yourself, ripping throughout your whole body, your head, your legs, your chest explodes into bliss. And after that, it remains ever open to the energies inside and the bliss. And for years, it can go on like that, deepening and changing. You're never apart from the bliss and from the God realization until you enter emptiness and you realize that's what the bliss is, nothingness. And when you realize this, you know what a joy death must be because it's even deeper into the emptiness. Can you imagine moments of infinite rest and peace as your body and consciousness die and you ascend into the most beautiful peace of all? What happens after that, I don't know. But I do know that death can be peaceful and wonderful because you enter the completest rest, the completest emptiness you can imagine with not a movement of desire. And you can fundamentally feel your own nature as a breath of consciousness. And pure consciousness is rapture. Pure emptiness is rapture, but of a different quality than at an initial awakening of Shakti within you. Those lightning bolts of energy that seem to tear the matrix apart. and allow you to gradually descend into the roots of yourself. I just told you in the most complete way, everything you need to know about spirituality. 
And now what you have to do is enter the silence of yourself. You should come here because I'll tell you bullshit to entertain you, but I'll also be throwing at you emptiness. And you can do it by worshiping your cat. Worship any animal. They're not burdened that much by mind. They do have a rudimentary mind, but it, it really doesn't stop them from complete freedom of being themselves at all times. There comes little guy again. You can see it in him. Do you have anything to say to us? Huh? You see them, don't you? What are you going to say to your audience? That's it. What are you going to say? Unbelievable. The depth of wisdom in this little guy. Look at him. Look at him reaching out to me and touching him, me, his life force, bonding with my life force. Look at his eyes, the brightness. There's nothing in him that isn't himself. He's showing us every second who he is. Does anybody have any questions or any statements to make? Any complaints, Mark? Any any complaints? Not lately. Lately, you've been simplifying and going deep. I like it. Ray K, have you anything to say? You don't have to say anything. This is not a demand, it's an offer. If you'd rather be still, that's okay too. Richard, what about you? You don't have to say anything to say if you don't want to. Um, just thank you, really. I, uh, after last week's, I came to last week's one for the first time and then I got into, it had quite a big effect on me, I think, and uh, I got into the energies and the heart much more, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, just a lot of gratitude this week, yeah. Welcome, Richard. You're always Thank you. welcome. Thank you. Spencer, what say you? We didn't understand a word. Um, a new cat. Frank? Morning. Well, these past uh, since February. Can you hear me? Can't hear me. 
Yeah, speak a little louder though. Yeah. Try to change my earbuds. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Since February, which was when Shivaratri occurred, um, I have been having, I guess, dying experiences. That's what it feels like. I've been having uh, difficulty breathing. I have these periods uh, almost every day of heaviness on the chest. And um, well, use an inhaler, it doesn't help much. And finally, in the past month, it's gotten so um, debilitating when it occurs that I've ended up taking a small piece of uh, anti-anxiety medication. And um, it feels like uh, as everything about me that I'm conscious of wants to be done with this life. This life is, and this body is just saying, no, nope, you're still here. You still have to work. You still have to pay bills. You still have to do all the things. And when, when I was in those 30 years that I spent with this person, the thing that sustained me was um, I thought I knew where I was going. I had a fine direction and all I had to do was to kind of hold on to him. And now that I have moved past that, I have nowhere. I have a direction and I have no one to hold on to. And so the body is um, making sure that I hold on to it in in a um, frightening kind of way. You know, what kind of way? Frightening. I mean, when these, uh, when this inability to breathe occurs, it feels like I'm suffocating, literally. And I know it's not heart and it's not lungs and I've had all that looked into. It's not, this, these are anxiety episodes, no question. And I've never really had them like this in my life before. So um, there's a war going on clearly, and I don't know what to do but to surrender to them. I am allowing myself to take something just to interrupt the intensity of the anxiety or I will be able to function. Other than that, I'm fine. Right now, what do you feel? This moment. Um, a mixture it. of a mixture of silence and teariness, and I suppose a subtle level of intense fear. Fear. Hmm. When you ask, I wouldn't describe it. Like describe it. How would you experience it? When you uh, put the camera on your on your cat, and you said he's he's just it's just itself. It was the moment that I uh, I got it, or it got me. It reminds me of when I used to uh, experiment with MDMA for a period of time. I would be in this place that was a, a profound sense of self-love and appreciation and love of everything. And every time the drug wore off, a state of profound depression set in. And it would last for hours as the prison solidified itself once again.
And I suppose that's some of what the fear is. Because there's but nothing what's the I can experience do about it. Of it. What is the experience of it inside your body and, and that? Not the story about yeah, this, but yeah. the physical experience of it. There is a heaviness in the chest, not severe, but there. There's a feeling as if I need to keep taking a deep breath and it never quite gets enough, like it can't get quite over the hill. And then um, so that sense of not having enough air is kind of in the background. Can you sink your attention into the heaviness in your chest? Get out of your head and into your chest and sink into that heaviness. And if it does, let that heaviness take you backwards and downwards like an elevator. Just welcome that heaviness. Throw yourself open to the heaviness. Feel the fear throughout your whole body, throughout the whole room. And see if there's a conflict there between the heaviness and the fear and which wins, and if what's that density made of, of the heaviness? Is it energies congealed? If you relax into the heaviness, what happens to you? What do you experience? feels like a, a webbing, um, interlacing of tendrils, semi-permeable, right? let's move in and out, but there's still an obstacle. When such a situation presents to anybody here, where they're getting into a spiritual area that they can't get through or beyond, don't run from it by stopping the meditation or whatever you're doing. Go into the messiness, go into the heaviness, go into the fear, go into the terror, rush headlong into what frightens you, what drives you, and become one with it. And in that oneness, you're liberated from it. And that energy suffuses your whole personality as it's released from the bonds of being an emotion or an attitude your whole body has taken on and releases into the emptiness at your core. And it's a profound release of energy inside. And you do this throughout your life. I've been doing that most of my life that I can remember. And situations keep coming up. Not anymore so much because nothing's going on around here except the little guy. So their situation isn't arising. And, but if you're involved in life, they will arise all the time with your spouse, your girlfriend or your boyfriend with your boss, with your job, with the government, with your landlord. It's countless. 
the occurrences are countless to erase that, that blind part of yourself that you don't want to recognize because it's too scary or you've just pushed it away. And instead, welcome it. Welcome the fear. Welcome the heaviness. Welcome the, the yuck that you feel, the disgust that you feel, and find out why you feel that by entering it and skating on it. These are the times that are naturally presented to you all the time. You don't have to practice formal meditation. All that you have to do is wait for the, those, what would you call it? The vertices of shit arising in you and to enter them with an open heart and open mind and to feel them really as they should be felt with full attention and openness, not blocking anything because the blocking is what you usually feel, not what's underneath it. Because we all feel the blocking easily. The blocking is done with tension in our bodies. And the tension is easily accessible to most of us. And what most of us can do in order to go deeper is to relax that ten into that tension and fall backwards. Get in an easy chair, lay down and fall backwards into yourself. In your imagination, fall backwards into yourself, into that nothingness, into those depths. And then you'll begin to encounter those states that arise within you that are parts of the matrix that still grasp you. And it's kind of a never ending battle. You go through these time after time after time after time and slowly they release your, the grip, their grip on you. And when suddenly the grip is left behind, all kinds of things begin happening as are happening to Chris and Bernadette now and other people like Eric and maybe somebody else, but I don't know unless they tell me. I give you all a blessing of nothingness and peace. Don't run from emptiness and embrace all the obstacles that arise that prevent you from becoming empty. All your desires, all your fears are there to teach you the way to that cave of silence. Even God realization is only the beginning, but what a beginning it is. I love you all. Enter that silence with me. Stay into the bliss of nothingness. Fear not the death of the body because it will be the ultimate bliss
Chris and Bernadette, please take over. Teach your teachings. <laughs> 